Well, picking right up where I left off, I'm going to service the uh, control motor here, and I've got some dangly wires. Let's see if I can focus this and let you see how I think there's one little thread there holding that on. And this deck's been operational, so that's all it takes is one strand, I guess. But it needs to be repaired. So we'll get these. There's three screws. The two there visible on the bracket and then one on the right. Mark those wires black and orange. And then one right there, and that's a little bit different than the other two. I think it's smaller. And there's the belt that I had put in about six months ago or so. I won't change that. It's, it's a good belt. I'll clean it up. That cam there, I want to look and see if there's any grease, dried grease in it, if it's got anything left at all, because uh, that, should be, that should be serviced along with everything else. It doesn't look like there's much there. If there is, it's dried up. And no, I don't I don't see anything there at all. So we'll take care of all that. It still operates pretty freely. I generally put that bar in a horizontal position, makes it easy to get the uh, cam lever position back in. Our little clips come off. Yeah, it looks like there might be a little bit of something in there. And that's the little follower bearing. I think it's uh, Delrin or nylon. I think it's actually Delrin. And it has these little teeny split washers or split retainers that can uh, jump out of sight really quickly. in good shape no cracking nothing bad going on there I'm just gonna soak this with some alcohol I'm not really doing much cleaning here I'm just soaking it trying to get uh, a little bit of fluid on there I'll come back with a Kim wipe and clean all that off That's the uh, head stack elevation mechanism and need to be sure to get um, get cleaned up underneath where that small dimple is. That's actually the bearing surface. Just wipe everything down. This is really clean in here. There's a little bit of old lubricant, but for the most part, it's not too bad. Let's zoom in here and right there, that little spot I'm cleaning right there is uh, needs to be lubricated on both sides. 
that side and then the other side over there. Get that little retaining clip off, clean that. I didn't remove that. It's really not that bad. I'm just going to soak it with a little bit of IPA, brush it down, and uh, relubricate it with some thinner oil. Just want to get up inside of that shaft a little bit, clean up a little bit better than that. I use this Nye oil. Um, used this for a lot of years. Works really well. These are uh, galvanized parts against um, CAD plated parts, and they just need a little drop. They don't need very much. I'll put a little bit more on here than I normally do. Probably won't be back in here for many years, so. This is not an area where I would worry about tape dust or debris getting into and causing any sort of problems. So I can, I can be a little bit more generous with the oil. That all looks pretty good. I'm just going to clean that little E-clip. These retaining clips have a smooth side and a rough side. And unsurprisingly, they usually have the rough side against the hub. It's visible. You can see the, the uh, smooth side is shiny. And this is the rough side, and you can feel where the ridges are where it comes through the die. And I... While I was searching for the C-clip, my camera ran out of film and I didn't get the process of cleaning these up. It was just a toothbrush and some IPA, blew them out with air, um, lubricating the, uh, the bores and then a little bit on the, uh, where the cam rides. Same thing with the pulley, just, uh, I'm not putting a ton in there, but I'm, I'm putting an amount. I did lubricate right there around that uh, linkage and then there's the lubricant over there on the dimple as well. I already did all the uh, the other three and now I'm just getting a little bit on the base of that follower. A little IPA and some compressed air.
Just get a little bit on the top, on the sides. That will all wipe off in the inside of that cam gear and uh, it'll be distributed where it needs to be. And my little split washer. Those have a habit of jumping off and flying to the next county sometimes. All right, let's get a little bit in there too. Looks like I'm being a little bit sloppy here, but I'm gonna distribute that around a little bit more evenly. Again, I, I put no lubricant on the gears at all. I just like those clean and dry Sometimes if you have a really noisy mechanism or something like that, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit on, but these are quiet. These transports are almost silent in use and uh, they don't need any extra help from greasy gears, in my opinion. Yeah, and that all works the way it should. No excess play. This was a very well taken care of deck, I think. Probably not used a lot. My old pulley. This is the easier way to clean them if that belt turns to mush. Just take them out and clean them while they're out. It's not that difficult. Let's get our old clips on there. Again, I've got the... Uh, the smooth side against the hub. The opposite of how I usually take, usually see them installed. Now when I can just push in there with my thumb, I don't think I'll have that kind of luck with that pulley. It's No, nope, couldn't do it. Very nice. Just put a little bit here where the fork goes before I uh, forget to do it. I'll put some on the fork too, but All right, I like all that. So now let's deal with the uh, control motor and the potentiometer there. I plan to replace this potentiometer because they have a habit of, they operate very quickly, uh, faster than you would operate a volume control or something like that. And they're aluminum shaft and aluminum housing, and they gall up. And I've had them actually seize up completely. I'm just showing the little single thread. They have a habit of seizing up, 
and uh, I was able to find direct replacements for them. And I, I just like to change it out. They can be lubricated. I've actually taken them apart before I could find before I found the replacements. I've taken them apart and drilled a very tiny, tapped a very tiny screw in the back of the shaft so that I could reassemble it because they're swaged together and they're not meant to be serviced. But once I found the replacement, um, I, I just do it that way. And the same company, same direct. In fact, they're probably the same part number. I may even offer these uh, for sale on eBay or Reverb, make it easy for somebody else to get them. If I do, I'll put a link in the description. Right, I'm just going to rotate that all the way anti-clockwise and make a mark so that I know how they go back together. That's probably what that little, that's probably a timing mark there. I don't know, but I just do it this way. Now, right there, right there where that nut is uh, right now is where the, joint is for that and it can be lubricated there. It doesn't hurt to put a little drop of lubrication in there if replacement doesn't take place. Um, I just replace them. I've got the wires marked for color. And really, I don't know why I'm taking the time <laughs> to desolder that. I just clip them off and be done with it. Yeah, straighten them out here, get them equal in length. All right, let's get them stripped off here. little tiny bit of flux. Clean off my solder. My iron's nice and bright. I'll just uh, hold these in my hands so that I can tin them just as quickly as I can. Um, I don't do the twist the cable around the solder lug 12 times and then, you know, put it together. That's really not a good way to install leads. And that's it, just a little bit like that. And this is what they look like when they're done. Um, there's about a diameter, a wire diameter between the end of the solder 
and the beginning of the insulation. So there's no solder underneath that insulation. It's clean and it gives it better longevity that way. I try not to get any solder underneath that insulation at all. Another little cleanup. These are uh, a few extra steps that only take a few seconds and really make a nice job out of it in the end. I'll just put the little potentiometer in there, hold it for me. Just I'll just put the lead in and put a little tiny hook on it. That will outlive everything it needs to. And if the next guy needs to get in there and desolder it, he'll have an easier time. Cleaned them, tinned them. A little bit too much on that one there. Let's run it through there and just put a little little tiny hook on it. Looks like they're correct. That first one lasted, uh, gee, what, almost 40 years, so I think this one will last longer. And this is just the control motor, and I'm lubricating the front bearing on that. This will be the last thing I do tonight, and I'll let it seep in there. I'm not worried about getting any on the pulley. I'll just wipe that off before I install it. There we go. Got it that time. What I'll do is I'll just lay that uh, standing vertically and I'll let it sit there overnight and just penetrate in there a little bit and then clean it off when I come back tomorrow. <laughs>